Hey everybody, Ryan here at eTrailer. Today on our 2015 Ford Explorer, we're gonna be taking a look at and showing you how to install the Demco Supplemental Braking System. Now probably my absolute favorite thing about this setup is how easy it's going to be to use whenever you're ready to flat tow. There's really hardly anything to it at all. So once you have your tow bar and your cables all hooked up, all you're gonna to have to do is take the braking system tether here and put it around the breakaway switch. And then you just hop inside the Explorer, come down here to your G-Force controller, and flip that switch into the on position. And then you're all good to go. So one of the really nice things about this setup is the fact that it is proportional. So that's gonna bring you to a safe and more predictable stop. So the way it's gonna work is, however hard you apply the brakes in the motorhome, the Explorer is going to match it. So to kind of give you an example, Say if you're just cruising along and maybe hit a red light and you're kind of just decelerating and lightly apply the brakes, the Explorer is going to do the same thing. So let's say if you're on the highway, maybe at a little higher rate of speed and hit some traffic and you're kind of unexpecting it. So you really got to kind of stand on that brake pedal and come to a faster stop. The Explorer is going to do the same thing. And so everything is going to be working in sync with each other and it's going to make your experience that much better. The system is also going to have a LED indicator light that's put on the back of your rear view mirror. And that way, whenever the system is activated, it's going to illuminate red. And that's just a quick, easy way you can kind of keep an eye on things to make sure your system is turning on whenever you're hitting the brakes. So that breakaway switch that we hooked up our tether to, that's going to be there as a safety feature. So what this is going to do in the event of a catastrophic disconnect, this pin is going to get pulled out and that's actually going to activate our braking system. So when that happens, it's going to help bring the Explorer to a safe stop. So there's going to be a total of five major components that you're going to need to flat tow your Explorer down the road. You're going to have the base plate, which just provides us with a solid and reliable connection point. That way we can hook up our tow bar to it. The tow bar is the second main component here. This is actually going to be the physical link that connects to the front of your Explorer to the back of your motorhome. Third main component is going to be your safety cables. Now those are gonna be there in the event of a catastrophic disconnect. The safety cables are gonna keep everything hooked together. Your fourth main component is going to be your tow bar wiring. So the tow bar wiring is going to transfer the lighting signals from the back of your motorhome to the back of your Explorer, keeping you safe and legal. And the fifth main component is going to be a braking system. So what the braking system is going to do is apply the brakes inside of your Explorer whenever you hit the brakes in your motorhome. So that's gonna bring you to a more safe and predictable stop and reduce the wear and tear on your motorhome's braking system. So at the end of the day, when it comes to braking systems, I really like this one. I have a ton of experience with them. They're really reliable and super easy to use. Now I will say, if you're someone that occasionally flat toes or changes their vehicle quite often, a portable system might be a better option. And that's because the system we have here today actually is more or less permanently installed on your Explorer. It can be changed over to a new vehicle, but it, is, it isn't as easy as a portable system would be. However, to get everything set up, it does take a little bit of time, but at the end, the result is that ease of use. So in my opinion, it's worth that time to get it all set up. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and do that together now. To begin our install, we're first gonna wanna mount up all of our major components. The first one being our main operating unit. Now I mounted ours just behind our bumper beam. That way it's out of the elements and it's not all that visible. It'll look really clean once we have everything back together. So the way I did that is I just used a angle bracket and just drilled a couple of holes in the operating unit tab here, connected the bracket to it, and then used some self tapping screws to secure it down into the bumper beam. And that makes it very secure and we don't have to worry about it going anywhere. Our next component will be the breakaway switch. This is 
kind of the same concept here. I used a no drill bracket to secure that to our base plate. And then I just drilled a hole in that bracket and ran a bolt through our breakaway switch to secure it to the bracket. Now we can move to the inside of our Explorer and on the passenger side, we can mount up what's called the G-Force controller. So that's this box right here. I simply just used the provided screws to secure it to this panel. Now there's a couple things you need to do when we secure this. You wanna make sure that this knob is facing the direction of travel. So you want this to face the front of the vehicle and you want the box to be as level as possible. So not only do you want it level up and down, but also side to side. And right here in this location gives us a really nice setup. There is some wires that come off the back of it. And those wires, what I simply did was just tape them together and pushed them up behind our center console. That way they'll come out on the driver's side floorboard and make them easier to work with. Now we can mount up our indicator light. This is just two-sided sticky tape. So you can just peel the backing paper off and secure it to the mirror. The wire that comes off of it, we need to route over to the driver's side floorboard. So what I did is I just followed this piece of plastic trim here up where the headliner meets the glass. There's a small gap there. You can kind of just feed that wire in there. We're going to go all the way over to the edge of our windshield. You can kind of peel down your A pillar there and kind of tuck that wire in behind it. And if you just pull down on the weather stripping, you're able to just kind of feed that wire all the way down along through there. And once we get to here, you can kind of just push that wire up in between them two panels and it's going to drop out right here there is a little plastic cover here that just pulls off by hand makes it a little easier but you're going to feed it through that opening and drop it down under the dashboard and your wiring will come out right here now underneath the driver's side dash we can mount up our actuator cylinder so the way this is going to work is it's going to clamp to the brake pedal arm. There's going to be a cable that comes off the back of it with an anchor that we need to secure to the firewall. So what I did was take the included bracket and drill it into the firewall. Now you want to make sure that there's nothing of importance on the other side of the firewall before you do any drilling. So you want to make sure to and underneath or from up top and look back there make sure that you're not going to screw into anything so i just use a self tapper on each side and for our anchor i also used a self tapper so there's one thing that you want to make sure of the cable that runs off the actuator cylinder you want it to be in a straight line now when the cylinder is in the relaxed position you do want a little bit of slack in the line so you want to be able to kind of grab the cylinder and move it back a little bit, a little bit of play there. And to achieve that play, there's going to be on top of the anchor, a four millimeter Allen head set screw. So you can kind of pull on your cable to set the slack and then tighten down that hex head. And that'll allow you to make that adjustment there. Now, while we're down here, it's a good opportunity to run some of our wiring through the firewall as well as our nylon air tubing. Now, in our case, the grommet that's usually right here behind our gas pedal is there, but there's a cable running through it. So what I had to do was just drill a opening through the firewall and all the wires that I ran through the firewall, I did all the wires coming from our G-Force controller, as well as our nylon air tube. And what I did as well was run two extra pieces of wire through. And those two extra pieces are just gonna make life a little bit easier once we get everything hooked up. When I did that, you wanna make sure that 
you're not going to run them through bare metal so you're going to want to use a grommet or something like that to keep everything protected in my case i have a piece of rubber hose that i simply just split in half wrap it around the wires and push that rubber hose through that's going to keep it keep all the wires nice and protected that way we don't have to worry about them rubbing on that bare metal so once we have our wires pushed through we might as well hook up what we need to inside here since we're already under the dash and the first one being one end of our nylon air tubing so i left about maybe a foot foot and a half or so here on the inside of our explorer and the end of this tube is going to get connected to this fitting here on our actuator cylinder so when you hook this up you want to make sure that the end of the hose has a really nice clean cut so you want to use a tool like this a utility knife or even a tubing cutter but so we'll make a clean straight cut on it we'll take a good look at it make sure everything looks good it's a good example of how one should look with that being said it's really straightforward you just go to the back of your fitting plug the line all the way in and just gently pull back on it to make sure it's completely seated the other two wires that will hook up while we're under here are the two extra wires that we ran one of the extra ones i ran will be this dark green one and the other extra one will be this solid white one these will eventually get connected to other wires under the hood but for now we'll just focus on this connection so the dark green wire i connected that to the black wire from our indicator light and the solid white wire i connected that to the red wire from our indicator light and to make that connection i just used a couple of small buck connectors now underneath the hood to give you an idea here's where our wiring and our nylon air tubing came through and i just routed them up and along through here at this point i made a couple of connections and those were the yellow and green wire from our g-force controller so these actually tap into our diode wiring so the diode wiring the yellow wire cut that in half then you're going to have the yellow wire from your g-force controller you're going to connect those two wires together in one end of the buck connector and then complete the connection by taking the other side of the diode wiring that you cut and connecting it that way so that's how it'll turn out and same exact scenario for our green so green diode wire cut in half green wire from our g-force controller tapped into one side and all completed by using a buck connector now we can move on to the white wire that comes from our g-force controller so this is simply a ground so I just kind of ran it along through here and utilized a factory weld nut and a ring terminal and I found a bolt that you can pick up at your hardware store if your Explorer doesn't have a factory one in there and that's how you can secure it to the body of our vehicle and give us that ground we need. Now what we're going to do is take our extra white wire that we connected to our indicator light and our nylon air tube and run that down by our operating unit. So the way I did that, I simply just kind of follow along our battery, coming down behind our headlight. And everything just drops down right here. So I just continue to route it. Ended up going behind our bumper beam The white wire ends right here and our nylon air tube simply just continues to run over to the side of our operating unit. So what we'll do is get our nylon air tube hooked up and this is going to work the same way that our actuator cylinder did. 
You wanna make sure that cut is nice and clean. So this is gonna work the same way that our actuator cylinder did. We wanna make sure that that cut is nice and clean. And it's simply just going to push into that fitting on our operating unit. Now we can hook up the wires coming out of our operating unit. So we'll start with the blue one. That just runs over. And the blue one is actually going to tap into or get connected with the solid blue wire that comes from our breakaway switch. So I just put them in one end of the buck connector, kind of like we did the diodes. And on the other end of that is where I connected that white wire that comes from our indicator light. Now, if we move on to the brown wire from our operating unit, that runs over and ties into the orange wire with the black stripe that comes from our breakaway switch. On the other end of the buck connector, I have a black wire. You can always use an extra piece of wire that you have left over too. This is just a piece I had laying around. This is gonna go up to the positive battery terminal. And while we're running this up there, what we're also gonna do is take the red and black wire coming out of the main operating unit and run that into the engine compartment as well. And the way I did that was I just took the same path as earlier, just behind the bumper and up behind the headlight. So right here is where our black operating unit wire came up, as well as the red operating unit wire and our thicker black power wire that we're going to connect to the battery later. We can make these connections now. So the red wire from the operating unit gets connected to the red wire from our G-Force controller. The black wire from our operating unit gets connected to the black wire from our G-Force controller. But that extra dark green wire that I ran, that's also gonna get tied into one side of that buck connector there. Now for our black power wire, that's gonna get connected to the positive battery terminal. But what we're gonna do is take the included fuse holder and connect that to the wire, and this will end up going to the positive battery terminal. So what you wanna do, make sure the fuse is not installed for, in there first. We're gonna be installing the fuse at the very end once everything is connected. We're gonna cut that in half and strip back both ends. So one end of our fuse holder is going to receive a ring terminal. So that just slides on and we'll crimp it down. The other side, the fuse holder is gonna get a buck connector. Now I've been using all heat shrink buck connectors cause they give us a little more protection against corrosion and stuff like that. The ones that come in the kit will work just fine, but if you'd rather use these heat shrinks, you can pick them up here at each trailer. So that gets crimped on. And if you grab our black power wire, put that in the buck connector, and crimp that down as well. And again, since I'm using the heat shrink style, I'll grab my heat gun and seal everything up. The ring terminal we can now place on the positive battery. So we'll take a 10 millimeter and loosen up this nut. Now this nut is not intended to come completely off. So you don't want to force it because you might damage the threads. But what we're going to do to get it connected is just trim a small opening here in the ring terminal. That way we can just kind of slide it around the stud. Sometimes I do like to kind of close that gap up a little bit. Just kind of gives us a tighter fit. So 
So once we have it kind of cut out, we can slide it underneath the head of the nut and then tighten it back down. Now what we can do is pre-assemble our vacuum line. That way we can tap it into our vacuum system. And it's a lot easier just to put all of our fittings on together as one assembly out here as opposed to trying to do it one at a time because it is a little tight. But what we're gonna do is take about a foot or so of the larger hose. This diameter hose is not come included, so you will need to pick a little bit up separately at your local auto parts store. But with that being said, we are going to take the included fitting here. The one side will be larger than the other. We're gonna take the larger side, put that into our larger hose. And this simply just gets pushed down into the hose. It's a barbed fitting. So, kind of just work that on like that. And then what we can do is cut maybe about an inch or two off of the smaller hose that is included. Slide that onto the smaller part of our fitting. Work that on all the way, like that. We're gonna grab our check valve and the black side, we want it to face the engine. So eventually this part's going to get connected to our engine. So we want that black part of the check valve to face towards it. Push that in there. Then we're gonna grab maybe about a foot or so of the included hose. Put that onto the other end of the chuck valve. We're gonna have our T-fitting. So this is gonna get plugged into here. Then finally, what we're gonna do is take another small piece of hose, a couple inches, push it onto the other side of our T-fitting. And finally, we can take that last fitting, that's small on one side, large on the other, and put that into the hose here. So once we have this all set up, <clears throat> what we can do is move to our engine's vacuum system. So if we look just behind our throttle body, we're gonna have this vacuum line here. And I did remove the engine cover and the air inlet tube here. You don't have to do that, but it just makes it a little easier to see and a little easier to work. We're gonna pull this hose off of the intake You'll have a clamp here. Just unclamp it and kind of pull it back out of the way. And we're able to work that off of the fitting. We can then take the assembly that we made and the large end here. It's gonna slide over the factory fitting. And then this end here that we originally removed will go into the larger fitting here on our hose. So I went ahead and reinstalled the hose clamps and all of our smaller connections here. What I like to do is just wrap some zip ties around them for a little extra peace of mind. But with that being said, we have our T-fitting here with one last barbed fitting coming out. 
what we're going to do is take the remaining long piece of tubing we're going to connect that to the T fitting and this is going to run down to our main operating unit and that's where the other end of this line is going to get plugged in so I already routed it I'll show you how I did just comes around through here So it kind of goes under our coolant reservoir, down along through here, underneath of our headlight, where it comes under the light and kind of just wraps kind of behind our bumper beam and over to our operating unit. So the end of the hose is just going to get plugged into that check valve that's pre-installed into our operating unit here. So now what we can do is move back to our fuse holder. And since everything is hooked up and connected, we'll install the fuse. Then we'll kind of tidy all of our wiring and everything up, get everything back together. And then we're able to test our system out to make sure it's functioning properly. And that'll finish up our look at and our install of the Demco Supplemental Braking System on our 2015 Ford Explorer.